Germany, the largest nation in Western Europe. Germany, the industrial giant and economic center of Western Europe. Processor of raw materials. Land of coal and steel. Rural, idyllic Germany. The country of the storied Rhineland. The Rhine River is one of the most beautiful rivers in the world. One of the longest and most important rivers in Europe. Not only Germany, but Switzerland, France and the Netherlands depend upon this river for their trade. Along the steep banks of the Rhine River stand many monuments of German history. Castles and fortresses of medieval times, ancient resorts of princelings and knights who were once rulers here. The importance of the Rhine lies in her course. The Rhine River flows between Switzerland and Germany to the town of Basel, then continues between Germany and France to Strasbourg, and from there on passes through Germany to reach the sea in the Netherlands. Two important regions are crossed by the river. The mountainous region that rises in the middle of Western Europe and the northern plains stretching from the Netherlands eastward across Germany into Poland and Russia. After defeat in World War II, Germany was divided into two separate states, the Federal Republic in the West and the People's Republic in the East. Today, of Germany's more than 70 million people, over three quarters live in the Federal Republic. Here are situated most of Germany's 29 larger cities. We shall begin our exploration in the mountainous uplands of the south, where the development of modern Germany began, and where the industrial age has least changed the face of the land. Long before historic times, lake dwellers built villages here. One of the oldest traces of human settlements was found in Neanderthal. Long before our era, Roman legions built a defense wall through Germany and fortified their permanent camps. Much of the face of Alpine Germany is peaceful and beautiful. Bavaria is an Alpine region, a land of towering mountains with green valleys between. It's a landscape of clear water lakes shaded by deep forests. As the valley broadens and the slopes gentle, Alpine meadows become accessible to cattle. The same families have dwelt here for many generations. The upland villages of southern Germany have changed little over the ages, and the people have preserved their old ways and crafts, like the woodsmen in the Black Forest. Like the wine growers of the Rhine region. Like the farmers of the mountain slopes. Farmer Johannes Schmidt uses a power clipper, a very handy tool for harvesting his wheat on the small and slanted fields. The whole family works together, especially at harvest time. At noon, the men leave the field last. Many generations of Schmitz have built this large Bavarian farmhouse. Under the same roof are housed the people, the cattle, and the storage bins. The woodwork is typical for the region, and so are the religious paintings. A substantial farm dinner has been prepared by the youngest sister, but the farmer's wife serves. The dish is called Pickelsteiner, made of potatoes and other vegetables. Farm work is hard work, but the Schmitz would not change their way of life. Grandpa is still treated as the head of the household. This is a patriarchal society. The oldest male member of the family is respected, even though the son has taken over the management of the farm. 
but the German farmland cannot feed the whole population. Many people in these mountain communities earn their living or supplement their income with the skills of their hands. Craftsmen, like this violin maker, gave German workmanship a name the world over. Such handicraft skills are often transferred into other fields, porcelain ceramics, for instance. In this plant, which once served the kings of Bavaria, skilled hands fashion porcelain objects in the style of earlier times. These delicate knickknacks and dishes are only a few samples from the rich collection of porcelain products of the workshops at Nymphenburg in Bavaria. The development of these handicraft industries was fostered centuries ago by the growth of trade in southern Germany. This is a typical German town square in southern Germany. The town is richly adorned with the works of art and craftsmanship created during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, when the master craftsmen and merchants of these cities were taking the lead in commercial and cultural development of Europe. The signs of the guilds that once flourished in these towns may still be found on the old guild halls. Even today, the old ways survive. People still do much of their trading in the open-air markets where they like to buy goods brought into town directly from the farms. Everywhere in the background are monuments to remind them of the past. Out of the old crafts, there grew up in these cities a number of modern industries. The city of Nuremberg is one of the world centers of the toy industry. In these modern surroundings, people are engaged in the making of a remarkable variety of toys that are all over the world. For the ingenious creations of German toy makers, inheritors of their ancestors' art, are one of the nation's export products. Another leading skilled craft industry is situated at Oberkochen, near Stuttgart. Here they make fine lenses for cameras and other optical instruments. This is just one of a number of industries in which the unique technical talent of the German people has gained them worldwide recognition. These products will go largely to markets abroad. Different in many ways is the part of Western Germany which lies on the plains between the northern cities of Hamburg and Berlin and the industrial Rhineland. This is the richest, most populous and most productive region of the country. Here on the flatland, farms are larger and efficient machinery can be used. Most of Germany's grains are grown on the northern plains. Potatoes are another important crop. There's no shortage of labor here. Many of these farmhands are newcomers to this region, refugees from East Germany and from the provinces that Germany lost to Poland after World War II, persons displaced by war. Many farmers raise livestock, especially pigs. These products give Germany some of the food it needs, but not enough. Germany must still import food. The core of this region is the Rhineland-Westphalia district, Europe's biggest center of heavy industry. This district is part of an industrial triangle that takes in northern France, Luxembourg, and Belgium. The activity in this triangle are closely bound together. Within it lie extensive deposits of iron ore and coal, the two resources basic to modern industry. These resources supply the mills and foundries of the four countries for the making of steel and metal products, machinery and tools. The most important part of this industrial triangle is situated in the Rhineland-Westphalia district of Germany. Here lies the famous Ruhr Valley, with the most important centers of heavy industry. During World War II, this vital area was the target of many Allied bombing raids and many of these plants were totally destroyed. But in the years since the war, the people of the Ruhr have rebuilt these vast works and built them better equipped with the most modern facilities. 
Here they make steel and other metals that are the basic materials of modern industry throughout the world. In foundries, men make heavy machinery, some of it to be used in Germany, but most of it to be traded to other countries. Locomotives for customers in Europe, Asia, and South America. Trucks which compete with American, British, and French brands. The success of these industries is based in large part on the skill and energy of their workers. Such men as Heinrich Brandt, who has spent most of his life in the mills, except for the years in the army during the last war. Next to him, as his apprentice, works his oldest son, Emil. Herr Brandt belongs to a union which regulates his working hours and his pay. Just now, he's receiving his weekly wages set by union and management. He is paid in German marks, which is a currency issued by the West German Republic. In the Konsum, or cooperative store, Frau Brandt does her family shopping. She is a careful and economic shopper like most German women, for wages are not high. It requires careful planning to feed a growing family. Friedrich, her younger son, is a freshman in high school. If he does well, he will have the opportunity of a higher technical education. Otherwise, he will go straight from high school to his father's plant, like his older brother, Emil. Like most German workers, Herr Brandt and Emil use bicycles for transportation. They live in one of the newly built apartment dwellings for workers. Their small apartment is rather simply furnished, but the Brandts are a contented family. Life for them has grown steadily better over the years since the war. While Frau Brandt and her daughters prepare dinner, the men take time to listen to the popular foosball, a game similar to soccer. The bleachers are crowded when the local team meets its adversary from the nearby city. In spite of this successful recovery from defeat in war, the greatest problem that Germany faces today is the division of the country. How this affects the people is dramatically revealed in the city of Berlin. After the war, divided into four zones, Berlin is still split between the communist east and the free west, facing each other inside the city. Control of Berlin, just like the country itself, is split between the Western Federal Republic and the Eastern People's Republic. To this day, the silhouette of Berlin dramatizes the results of a disastrous war. Berlin, the nucleus of Hitler's Germany and center of the country's vast communications network, was a primary target for Allied bombing. After years of clearing, the debris of war is still seen in parts of Berlin. But the diligence of the German people in the western zone has speeded the rebuilding of the city. New houses have sprung up and new working places to replace the destroyed. For despite the division of the city, many industries in the western sector operate successfully. War is difficult to forget in Berlin. The barrier that divides the city is a constant reminder of defeat. The eastern, communist-controlled sector with its red flags, armed guards, and foreign signs and barbed wire is a constant reminder to the German people that they are a conquered nation. In the western sector, it is easier to forget. Here, life is more peaceful and prosperous. The reconstructed houses are modern. Streets are crowded with busy people as in any large city. The shops are well stocked and there's money to buy the goods that tempt the eye. There's plenty of electricity to light the neon signs. But the immediate and the long range problems remain. 
the farmers all over germany the craftsmen in their shops the miners of the ruhr and the workers in factories all germans are troubled by the division of their country they also face the problem of an industrious and industrial nation which must produce in order to live and must learn to get along with its neighbors and with the people far beyond their borders who buy their goods and whose friendship they need in order to prosper.